Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Today we're going to go back to the basics and talk about the quick and dirty of sponge filtration. They're affordable, easy to use, and really effective means of filtration. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. So here I have two examples of sponge filters that I have used in my fish room. Now this is the Porette block filter made by Swiss Tropicals and it's really my favorite for a few reasons but I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. This is the ATI sponge. Uh, they're very very cheap, very easy to find and work just fine. So the basics of the sponge filtration is you have this lift tube that goes into the sponge or in this case they fit through like this and then you attach air to the lift tube which draws the water throughout the sponge mechanically filtering removing any of the detritus suspended particles as well as providing a huge biological filtration for your aquarium so i'm sure you can see already how this is really useful they do an excellent job of filtering out the fine particulate matter in the water column they also increase surface agitation by doing a fine bubble output now in the ati's I like to attach a air stone to the bottom just so that the bubble outputs a little bit finer otherwise it's really loud this helps make it a little quieter as well as diffuse the bubbles that go up to the water surface allowing for that oxygen exchange now obviously there's a few drawbacks to sponge filtration first and foremost is that you can't use any chemical filtration things like carbon purigen etc if you're using these in your aquarium now I only use those things if I'm removing medications, but a lot of people like to remove tannins and they're definitely useful for that. The best part of these things for me though is absolutely how cheap they are. For just a few dollars you can get an adequate filtration for your aquarium that really does do a good job. They're super easy to clean. You just rinse them out in old tank water or if you're like me with a well you can rinse them out right in the sink. They're great because you can put extra ones in your aquarium in order to have seeded filters to move to new aquariums. And let's face it, guys, we're all always setting up new aquariums. And the best part for me is that they're completely safe to fry. The biggest drawback for a lot of the species that I work with is that the filtration can actually be dangerous to the inhabitants when they're really tiny. And these are totally fry and shrimp safe. So let's look in a few tanks and I'll show you how they work. So I have one of the Porette block filters in the back corner there and you can see it's just bubbling away as happy as can be. And in fact on this one I'm growing plants onto the filter and this helps to hide them because let's face it they're not the most attractive things but we can certainly do some things to help with that. This ATI in the front that I don't even have hooked up is completely infiltrated with Anubias. Now you may think it'd be more difficult to clean but it's really not. I rinse it the exact same way and it's super easy. I have another type of filter in the back of this one and but again it's just a simple sponge filtration air running to the lift tube and then the air being pulled through both sponges as it filters the water and then returns the bubbles to the surface providing oxygenation I am always super impressed with how well sponge filters do and it's especially critical in this aquarium that I have that sort of gentle filtration because it is a shrimp tank and as you can see Another benefit is that the shrimp will even hang out and hide in on, on the sponge filter, grazing on all the little delicious bits that collect there. Now you guys are familiar with this aquarium. This is my 150 gallon Asian Hill Stream modified loop system. And in this aquarium I've even used an adaptation of sponge filtration utilizing a corner half moon matten filter, which follows the exact same principles as a sponge filter, it's just super sized. Now one thing I should mention about sponge filtration is you can either use an air pump to run air and power the filter or you could use a power head. In the case of this corner matten filter I've plumbed it to an FX5 filter to provide a ton of flow. So they're very cheap, very easy and you can totally modify them to suit your needs. As you can see I have really great bubble output all over the fish room which allows for me to work with a lot of the Asian hill string species that I otherwise wouldn't be able to work with without a power head. As you can see, sponge filters are super versatile. I use several in my larger aquariums, generally two or more if the aquarium's over 30 gallons. 
and just one in my smaller aquariums and they just work great. Another added benefit is of having multiple filtration in the same aquarium like my 75s and my 55s is that I can clean one at a time which is really helpful if I've just added a ton of fish and don't want to rock that biological boat too hard. Now there are some times when I don't use sponge filtration, most notably my big boys. And that's because as we've discussed in the past, they poop Lincoln logs and they just need more filtration than a sponge filter can provide. That doesn't mean that sponge filtration wouldn't be beneficial in their aquarium, I just wouldn't want to rely on it because they would get clogged up too quickly. Now with my corner mat and filter, I've only had to clean it once in the past two years, which for me is a huge benefit. The rest of the sponge filters in the fish room I tend to clean about once a month or if I notice any slowing to the output or collected detritus in the water column. If they're full of goo, they can't filter any out. It's pretty simple. Let me know below what your favorite filtration is. As always, thanks for your guys' continued support. Make sure you stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. And if you keep following me on those other social medias, I'm gonna start doing some giveaways of plants. I have so many, and I just need to thin some out, and I thought, what a fun way to share with you guys. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos.